Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course, and we are pleased to be joined um, by my good friend Ricky Taylor of Wayne Taylor Racing, who co-drives the number 10 Konica Minolta Acura. Um, Ricky, how are you, bud? Good. Thanks for having me again, Casey. Can't wait for uh, to get back to Detroit after two years now, so should be good. So, oh, one of my, you know, it's one of my favorite weekends of the year. I, I missed it last year. Of course, you've had a lot of success there over the years, of course, with, um, you know, when you were driving for when they was when it was uh, when it was a Cadillac that you guys are driving for. And then, of course, you know, it's kind of a home turf kind of thing because you were when you were driving for Cadillac and then, you know, with that. And then, of course, driving the last few years with uh, for Team Penske. But of course, you've had a lot of success here over the years. What's it going to be like coming back? Yeah, uh, I mean. Uh, of the three years with with Acura, we only got to do two week, two years at um, at Detroit but at Belle Isle, and um, it definitely has a bit of a different vibe when you're not driving a GM product. Um, where we we're coming from Mid Ohio, which is our home race, and um, we've had a lot of success there. But now coming to um, to Detroit, we're really on on uh, behind enemy lines and. Uh, it definitely feels like Cadillac country and the Cadillac is really strong there. So we're going to do our best. I think uh, we've got some exciting changes with the car uh, that we're going to be looking forward to testing out in Detroit. Um, it's such a unique track. So the success we've had early in the year, hopefully it translates, but we, we keep having to reinvent stuff to, um, to keep on top of the ball because the, the competition is so tough. This, this race is a literal, this is the first sprint race of the year. Of course, there's two of them. Long Beach is going to be later on in the year. This is your first kind of like um, um, hour 50 minute race. So it's, it's, it's going to be, it's the literally no, mis you can't make any mistakes here at this place or you are going to pay very hard. So it's definitely, definitely one of those courses where you're going to have to, uh, you have to be on your A game a little bit, but how is that going to be? How are you guys going to, you know, get around this tough course? Because you know, as we know, Detroit is known for one thing: the bumps. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it's almost got the reputation of Sebring, I'd say, in terms yeah. of for the drivers. It's crazy bumpy in Detroit, and it's such an unforgiving track, as you said. It's uh, you know lined by concrete barriers. There's there's no room for error and you're, you're kind of bouncing over bumps and the car is slipping and sliding, especially being a street course that's been closed all, all year. Um, there's no rubber down. And so it takes, it's changing all weekend. So you always have to keep on top of details like that. But I think for the whole team, uh, everybody assumes that these shorter races should be simpler, but I, I would argue that they, they actually get more complex in that um, there's two pit stops, but it opens the strategy up so much more and, in terms of do you take four tires, do you take two tires, do you not take any tires? And I think we've done all of the different combinations of that throughout the years. And um, do you short fill to get track position? Um, it places a really big importance on qualifying. So all those little details throughout the weekend are just magnified and everybody has to execute so well, because as you said, any little mistake is gonna cost you. You find, of course, there was a period in time you know, when Wayne Taylor racing was absolutely unstoppable from like, I want to say, I want to say 16, 17, and then I think it was 14. The, yeah. The first yeah. one I think you got in, four, in, in 14, there was a little, uh, there's a story yeah. behind that one. <laughs> can, can, that, that one was a memorable one. Yes. Um, yes. We lived that yeah, one. I think that was 14 or 15, one of those years in there. Um, actually, all the Detroit wins have been memorable. 17, we, we, I crashed in qualifying and we had to come from the back, but 14 or 15, whichever one you're thinking of, I think it's 14. Uh, was where we were battling with Barbosa and the five car. And um, he got to the inside going into turn four. And, uh, and I tried to hang around the outside and we made contact on the exit of the corner. And uh, since I was on the outside, I hit the wall and he, he kind of squeezed me there. And, um, and both of our cars were very bent at that point. They'd hardly limped it around, but he actually got a puncture and spun. This is the final lap, and we barely hung on from the, the number 90 car that was charging at the end, and it was, it was quite dramatic. Yeah. Of course, um, you know, you've won here you know, three times, of course. 
you know, driving for, you know, G, the GM products. And speaking of GM, your brother's going to be back here for the first time in a while. Um, of course, the Corvettes uh, with, with the mom getting pushed back, the Corvette, um, the, the two the two yellow Corvette cars are, are going to be there as well. How's that, how cool is that to have that, have your brother back, of course, with GM's headquarters, like literally like feet away from the island? Yeah, I, I, I think for Jordan, he's really excited to get to go back to Belle Isle, but driving a Corvette, um, I think uh, all of GM was was disappointed the, the last few years when Lamar kind of clashed with the Belle Isle weekend in Detroit. And um, it only seems right that Cadillac and, and Corvette should be at should be at Detroit and it's such an iconic brand. It's really the marquee brand for, for GM at, uh, in motorsports. And uh, I think it's really cool that they're going to be there. Uh, it's another car on track, another variable that we haven't, that we haven't been around at that racetrack in a, in a few years. So we had a little bit of a learning curve how they are to get around and for them how to make that uh, C8 work around the, the bumpy streets for sure. Yeah, you kind of mentioned that, of course, you haven't been on a street course in a while, two years, of course, Long Beach and Detroit didn't happen. But what what's that learning curve going to be like for you to like, you know, readjust yourself? Because, you know, you get two practice sessions on Friday and, and qualifying, and then as well as a warm up session on, on Saturday before the, before the race at five, I think 5 p.m., if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. What's that going to be like going back there? And what are the goals for, you know, practice session, just kind of trying to re- reaccumulate yourself to this place again yeah i think um like you said our schedule is is we start where the first car's on track and i think and yeah. we are and, and it's going to be a completely green track there's going to be no rubber down it's going to be dusty and um probably you know not in a great condition so the track's going to be changing a lot for us i think once indycar hits the track we will have probably cleaned it up a bit for them so for us uh first First order of business is going to be like uh, getting used to being on street course again, like you said, handling the bumps, getting used to the, the track. Because um, every time you go back to a street course, it's really bumpy and, it, and you always get caught up by how narrow, how narrow they are. And, um, and then, you know, we'll have to just adapt as the track improves and not get too caught up in, in the green track and wait until the rubber kind of gets laid down to, to start working on our setups. But by the time we get to the end of practice two and the track's really coming around, it's going to be time for us to qualify. And I think for the first time since I've been going to Belle Isle, um, IndyCar races before our race. Yes. So that'll throw a whole new, um, you know, factor into the mix there that uh, we're going to be racing on IndyCar rubber. So when we do that at Detroit, it makes the track quite slippery, but we don't know exactly know what it'll do for, for Belle Isle. And that's quite interesting. Also, Indy Lights is, you know, Indy Lights and Indy Car are going to both be there. So, you know, they'll be having cars on track and you're, I think you're literally the last portion of that Saturday that's there. Do you, are, what, what does that do? Like when other series of cars are running there, what does that do to like those types of cars? Yeah, it's, it's funny. It, in sports cars, you get used to racing with lots of other people and, um, and lots of different tire manufacturers. Um, when we're racing in a Michelin series with all other Michelin tires and in the other series, like the Michelin you know, Pilot Challenge or, or any of those, uh, they mix well together. And the, the grip kind of stays pretty consistent throughout the weekend. But when we're racing on Goodyear rubber with NASCAR or Firestone rubber with IndyCar or you know, Pirelli with SRO, those don't necessarily mix the same way and it makes the track really, really uh, difficult sometimes, especially we found the past few years in Long Beach with the drift rubber, whatever they're using, Hankook, I think. And um, especially in their, their corners where they do a lot of their running, it becomes really, really slippery. Um, but at, Be at Detroit, at Belle Isle, um, the one thing we don't have to worry about is the marbles and pickup because all the, the, the volunteers and the track workers and the, the track crew there do such a great job of cleaning the track before and after every session. So at least we don't have to worry about marbles, but yeah, it'll be interesting how that, how the rubbers kind of mix together. You know, you've always been, whether you were driving for Acura Team Penske or, you know, when Wayne Taylor, you've always had some ties here because when you were driving for Wayne Taylor before you went to, went to Penske, it was, you had that, you had GM in your background. 
when you were driving for Team Penske, of course, the mm -hmm. captain, this is his event and all that. You don't have that for the first time <laughs> this year because, of course, Acura's from, you know, Ohio and, and I think we, and of course, it's, it's, how does that feel to like be like, maybe you want to just upset all, uh, everybody and, and <laughs> that went away from the Cadillacs. Yeah, I, I think you make a good point. I don't even think about that this is my first year without any ties because yeah. we've been coming to do the, the media luncheon for some reason every year. And now I don't think we're invited. So <laughs> um, it's okay. I'm still uh, yeah. going. Sorry? It's okay. I'm still going. <laughs> okay, enjoy. Enjoy. Um, yeah, so, so it's a bit funny like that, uh, not to have any ties. And, um, but yeah, it doesn't change our goals. I think we, we want to win this race really badly. It's a difficult race for us normally with, with this car. Um, so it was nice last year to have the six car get a win. But I think this year that it's going to be really hard to stop the Cadillacs. We're just really happy. We've got a little bit of a buffer in points. But the 31's been so strong uh, so far this year, but, all, but especially in the past at Detroit. And uh, so we really need to, do, to be on our game to, to take some points away again. Yeah, of course. All right, Ricky Taylor, thanks so, as always for talking to us. Good luck this weekend at Detroit. And I uh, can't wait to see you down there. Great. See you there, Casey. Thank you.